my wife, Anna, and I have been secretly married for seven years. She never wanted to make it public that her husband was involved in the entertainment industry. Then one day, Anna suddenly said she wanted to bring our child to appear on my show. I was full of anticipation, but in the end, I watched helplessly as she held our daughter's hand and became the special guest of a popular young actor. The whole internet was waiting to see me become a joke. The host asked me, where are your wife and child? Under Anna's gaze, I smiled with resignation. My wife just passed away, and I don't want the child. Chapter 1 When Anna appeared on the show, holding Lucy's hand, the live broadcast's viewership skyrocketed. I can't believe it. Is the business mogul Anna Lynn really appearing on a variety show? I heard it's for someone important. It must be for her rumored mysterious husband. Even the Lynn family's little princess is on the screen. I breathed a slight sigh of relief. I thought she had finally come around and was willing to support my work. Before I left the house that morning, she had casually mentioned while applying her lipstick, Cameron, I'll be on your show tonight. I thought she was coming for me, especially since she was bringing our daughter. So I reached out to greet Lucy, the child I love to the core. But the next second, it felt like a slap in the face. I watched as mother and daughter walked past me without even glancing in my direction and took their seats as the special guests of the popular actor, Jake. My hand stopped in midair. In disbelief, I softly called out, Lucy. Lucy only gave me a fleeting glance before turning her gaze back to her mother. At that moment, I saw a coldness in her eyes that seemed beyond her years, a coldness identical to her mother's. In an instant, a flood of malicious comments surged across the screen. Cameron, the eternal third male lead, just shamelessly hinted that he's the husband of Chairman Lin. I think Cameron is desperate for fame. Satisfying. Finally seeing Cameron Sue get slapped in the face. Our Jake is the real deal. Who the hell is this Cameron Sue? I frowned and looked at Anna. Did she even realize? That tonight, her actions would turn me into a joke across the entire internet. Chapter 2 Just as the host was about to direct the conversation to me, a system bug interrupted the live broadcast, causing a few minutes of pause. Anna moved to a corner to take a work call. I followed her and asked. You promised me you'd come to the show, but then you sit in Jake's guest seat. After finishing her call, Anna responded with a casual indifference. Cameron, I said I would come to the show, but I never said I'd be your guest. Jake's sister promised to give me a piece of land in exchange for helping boost his appearance. You know I'm a businesswoman, and profit is my priority. Cameron, you misunderstood. She explained it all so nonchalantly, as if I was the one making a fuss. At that moment, I suppressed the discomfort in my heart and asked her quietly, did you not think about how it would look for my wife and child to be someone else's guests? How was I supposed to handle that? Didn't you see the insults from those online trolls? Anna's expression remained as calm as ever, as if she truly couldn't understand my confusion. Cameron, if you insist on being in the entertainment industry, you should have a stronger mindset. Why do you care so much about what others say? A deep sense of helplessness suddenly welled up inside me. In our seven years of marriage, there had always been an impenetrable barrier to our understanding of each other. I turned to leave, but Anna grabbed my sleeve. Ron, let's go home together after this. She only called me Cameron when we were having disagreements as her biggest concession, but I no longer needed it. I shook off her hand and walked straight back to the live broadcast. When the broadcast resumed, the host, with a hint of curiosity, asked, Cameron, where are your wife and child? Did they come? Anna looked up, quietly watching me. Under her gaze, I smiled with resignation. Sorry, they couldn't make it. My wife just passed away, and I don't want the child. Chapter 3 Anna pressed her lips together, her eyes deep and unreadable. The comments on the live stream continued to scroll rapidly. Has Cameron gone crazy? Couldn't lie his way out. So he's flipping the table. This is hilarious. He doesn't even have a wife. Today, I didn't feel like indulging these netizens. Earlier, I had asked the trusted housekeeper to take a picture from my room. That picture was now uploaded to the big screen. The comments froze for a few seconds, then exploded. Am I seeing this right? Is that Cameron and Chairman Lin's marriage certificate? Is Chairman Lin okay? Not sitting in her own husband's guest seat, but in someone else's. What's wrong with Jake? Inviting someone else's wife and child as his guests. Cameron, bro, I was too loud earlier. I admit my mistake, I'm down on my knees. Everyone else at the scene wore dark expressions, except for me. I felt much more at ease and continued to explain. I'm planning to get a divorce, so in my mind, my wife is dead. As for the child, I'm not going to fight for custody. I wouldn't win anyway, so I'm going to act like I don't have a child. I wasn't planning to continue recording this show. Since I was getting a divorce, I would still get a share of the money, enough to cover the penalty for breaching the contract with the show. After living a life of restraint for over 20 years, at this moment, I just wanted to follow my heart and be reckless for once. Chapter 4 As soon as I reached the parking lot, my mother called. 
She started yelling at me without giving me a chance to speak. Have you lost your mind? Announcing on a live broadcast that you want a divorce. If you get divorced, what happens to your father's business? Our family has relied on the Lin family support for years, don't you understand that? Apologize. Apologize to Anna immediately and beg for her forgiveness. I interrupted her. But today, Anna was the one who embarrassed me. Why do you care who she supports or which young star she promotes? As long as you're Anna's husband, that's all that matters. Your father's shopping mall project has a funding gap. And your brother's esports company just started up, they both need Anna's backing. I couldn't take it anymore and hung up. Then turned off my phone. A deep weariness washed over me. To them, my marriage was just a bargaining chip to bleed dry. When I turned around, I saw Anna's petite figure leaning against my car. Her posture graceful. Where's Lucy? I sent her home with the driver. I've called off the show. There won't be any trending topics tomorrow either. Calling off the show. Removing trending topics. None of that was surprising. As the Lin family's heiress, she had the money and power to make all of that happen. Anna always handled things decisively, with an innate confidence. She even believed that divorce was just something I was saying out of frustration. And that as long as she said a few soft words, I would relent. She lowered her voice in self-mockery. You've made such a scene today. The whole internet is going to laugh at me. I chuckled and threw her own words back at her. Chairman Lin, you should have a strong heart. Why care what others say? Anna froze for a moment, then placed her hand on the car door I was about to open. Are you upset because of Jake? I only did it for that piece of land. I laughed. Anna, do you believe that yourself? When have you ever been short of a piece of land? It's because Jake looks like him, doesn't he? The photo in the hidden compartment of the second cabinet in your study. Not just Jake, even I look like him. That's why you married me, isn't it? Anna quickly let go of my hand, her face turning cold as ice. From now on, don't touch my bookcase again. The beautiful, false bubble burst, making everything crystal clear, I told her, word by word, with perfect clarity. Anna, there won't be a, from now on, I'm filing for divorce. Chapter 5, after I was born, my family's business started to decline, and I became the least favored child in the family. Marrying a wealthy heiress and allowing the family to struggle 10 years less was their expectation of me. My mother was a woman of action, and she started arranging blind dates for me as early as my sophomore year of college, and I accepted all of it, in exchange for permission to pursue a career in the entertainment industry, because becoming an actor, a movie star, was my only obsession. At first, it was the dream of my best friend, Martin. After he was gone, it became my dream. Before Anna appeared, I thought I would be forced to marry that wealthy older woman from Hong Kong, who was 20 years older and twice my size. She was old but wealthy, and everyone in the family was satisfied with the match except for me. Then, an unexpected blind date changed everything. A family like the Lin family, how could they be arranging a marriage with a small, insignificant family like ours? My mom, overjoyed, interrupted my dad's skepticism. Who cares? The important thing is to catch this big fish. On the day of the blind date, I sat in front of Anna like a puppet. At first glance, I admit I was captivated by her beauty and elegance. I was still wondering why someone so dazzling would need to go on a blind date when hot coffee splashed on the back of my hand. The new waiter was apologizing frantically, but Anna had already pulled me over to the sink, carefully holding my hand under cold water. This will make the pain go away quickly. Maybe it was this moment of gentleness that made me feel that marrying her wouldn't be so bad. Later. When the Lin family came to discuss the marriage, my mother was as excited as if she had won the lottery, and I had no objections either. After all, Anna was a hundred times better looking than that wealthy woman, wasn't she? After we got married, Anna treated me fairly well. Aside from not supporting my acting career, she was almost flawless in her role as a wife. In our free time, she would accompany me to the highest mountain in Hong Kong to watch the sunrise. She would go with me to drink the best, most authentic Hong Kong tea. We would walk hand in hand through every street and alley of Hong Kong like an ordinary young couple. She told me that she had attended university in Hong Kong, so she had a special attachment to the place. It wasn't until the seventh year of our marriage that I discovered the real reason. She liked Hong Kong because there had once been a him there. Like all the cliched love stories among the wealthy, Anna had a first love who was torn away by her family, and he was dead. That blind date was nothing more than a choice Anna made after taking over the family business and spreading her wings. When I accidentally found that old photograph in her bookcase, everything became clear. On the back were the words, my dearest Paul, and on the front was a man who looked 70% like me. In that moment, I realized, I was nothing but a stand-in. Every sunrise we watched together, every cup of Hong Kong tea we drank, every street we walked through, they were all memories of her and him, not the love I had believed in. Chapter 6 The underground parking lot was so quiet you could hear a pin drop. With a soft click, Anna lit a slim cigarette. Divorce. 
Aren't you considering Lucy? I let out a small laugh. Have you forgotten? Your mother said I wasn't fit to raise a child, and she shouldn't take my last name. She's six years old now, but I've spent less than six months with her. Over the years, Anna's mother had taken complete control of Lucy's upbringing, molding her just as she had molded Anna. Wasn't it you who didn't want her in the first place? Anna looked down at me with an air of superiority. Such a simple sentence, yet it pierced my heart like a needle. I had said it countless times, I never rejected Lucy. At the time, I was still struggling with depression, and I couldn't be near her because I feared I might hurt her. But Anna always ignored my explanation. I used to think she was just cold by nature. As a woman focused on a massive business empire, it was understandable that she might overlook the small details of life. But later, I realized it was because she didn't love me. Without love, nothing really mattered to her. All these years, I remembered every one of their birthdays, but no one ever remembered mine, except Martin. But unfortunately, there is no Martin in this world anymore. Anna sighed lightly. Why don't you cool off for a month? After that, when your anger has subsided, I cut her off. There's no need. I've thought this through, even now. She believed I was just acting out of emotion. Chapter 7 The day I packed up and left the Lin family's home, I went to pick up Lucy from school. Even though she saw me, she hesitated for a long time before finally getting into the car. Once inside, she frowned slightly. Dad, don't pick me up from school again. It doesn't look good in front of my classmates. Why? I can't explain to them that you're an unimportant actor. My hands instinctively tightened around the steering wheel. Who said your dad is an unimportant actor? In the rearview mirror, she lowered her gaze. Grandma and Nana both said it. Mom doesn't like your job either. We drove in silence the rest of the way. When we arrived at the garage at home, I turned to her and asked, What about you? What do you think? Lucy's response was mature, almost adult-like, and very cold. Dad, you should change jobs. You're selfish, you never think about how we feel. I closed my eyes briefly. Lucy, have any of you ever thought about how I feel? In the future, you won't be embarrassed anymore because I won't be picking you up from school again. For the first time, I spoke to her in such a cold tone. After getting out of the car, Lucy froze, staring at me in confusion. I didn't acknowledge her and drove away from the Lynn house at full speed. In the rearview mirror, Lucy's small figure and Anna's silhouette on the second floor balcony grew smaller and smaller until they finally disappeared. I glanced at the divorce certificate on the passenger seat and sighed deeply. From now on, my world was wide open, with endless possibilities. Chapter 8 Anna had never imagined that Cameron would initiate the divorce, and to do it so dramatically during a live broadcast, saying, my wife is dead. It almost made her laugh in anger. In her mind, Cameron had always been mild-mannered and lacked a strong will. Apart from his stubborn desire to be an actor, which she disliked, he fit the mold of a good husband. The main reason she agreed to marry him, aside from his vaguely familiar face, was because he seemed mild-tempered and unlikely to cause trouble. She knew very well that her mother was a dominant figure at home. She didn't want trivial family conflicts to get in the way of expanding her business empire. After they got married, she realized her choice had been correct. Cameron was incredibly patient and never argued with her mother. He only took on projects that were filmed locally. No matter how late the filming went, he would always return to the Lin family home. Every morning when she woke up, there was always a faint scent of citrus lingering in the air. It was the scent of his usual body wash. She would turn over, bury her face in his neck, and ask, Do you really like oranges that much? He would nod and smile. Yes, I do. Martin loved them too. She didn't know who Martin was, but he mentioned the name often. Every time, she didn't really pay attention. Maybe she was daydreaming, or maybe she was thinking about the group's new strategy, profit margins, and other work-related matters. Anyway, what he was saying wasn't important, right? She didn't know when it started, but he talked less and less, and eventually, he stopped talking about it altogether. Their conversations gradually became sparse. Three days after the divorce, Anna, who had always been composed, found herself inexplicably irritated by the bottle of citrus-scented body wash in the bathroom. Why are his things still here? The servant, bowing her head in apology, quickly gathered all traces of Cameron, the citrus body wash, the lavender bed sheets, the trinkets on the table, but that night, Anna, who usually had no trouble sleeping, found herself unable to sleep under the newly changed blue sheets. The unfamiliar scent in the air made her uncomfortable. The next morning, dark circles were visible under her eyes. She thought for a moment, then called for the servant. Bring back Mr. Sue's things. The servant was shocked. Chairman Lin. Everything has already been thrown out. We can't get them back. Anna felt like she had swallowed a bitter pill. Unable to speak. Chapter 9. Perhaps it's true that people feel particularly invigorated when something good happens. And divorce. Well, that can count as something good. Right. I received an invitation to audition for a well-produced drama series. 
The assistant director carefully explained to me that if I got the role, the filming would take place in three different locations, some of which were in remote mountain areas with harsh conditions. But if it's done well, there's a good chance of winning awards. The moment I heard about the possibility of winning an award, I didn't care about anything else. No problem. I'm in. Now, nothing could stop me from pursuing my dreams. For more than 20 years, I had been the obedient son of the Sioux family. I used my marriage to secure business deals and wealth for the entire family. I owed them nothing. For seven years, I had been Anna's husband. I played my role diligently, with sincere emotions, only to find out I was just a substitute. An unequal marriage only turns into a shackle. Luckily, I was already free. The role required four months of intensive, closed-door training and additions. Along with me, there were 107 other competitors, all entering the training camp together. It was both an opportunity and a challenge. Before dawn, I would wake up and start my morning exercises. Then came relentless horseback riding training, kung fu practice, etiquette lessons. Horseback riding, in particular, was our main focus. I went from being afraid to mount a horse to galloping with one hand while drawing a bow and shooting arrows. I fractured countless bones during that time. Some people, unaware of my situation, would joke with me, I heard you're Anna's husband. Why does a rich woman's husband need to work so hard? I didn't shy away from it at all. I'm divorced. I'm no one's husband. I have a name, Cameron. Others would sneer behind my back, muttering, this pampered playboy, living off a wealthy family, I bet he won't even make it past the first round of selection. In the past. I might have ignored it and endured, but not anymore. Now, if something bothers me, I deal with it immediately. Personal dignity can wait. I walked up to them and said, what are you betting on? Your leaky mouth. Before they could respond, I had already turned around, mounted my horse, and rode off at full speed. At that moment, it felt as if I had trampled all the doubts beneath my feet. There wasn't much time left before the final round of testing. I treated each day as if it had 48 hours, doing what I love. Every second was exhausting but fulfilling. On the day of the test, the sun was shining brightly. I galloped forward, my eyes fixed on the target, and shot an arrow straight into the bullseye. Once could be a coincidence, but when I hit the bullseye three times in a row, I knew my hard work had paid off. My overall score was the highest. The bloody marks in my palms were a testament to my success. Is that Cameron? Wow. He's amazing. He totally fits the image of the general in the script. Cameron, you nailed it. Your performance was excellent. At that moment, I felt a surge of emotion. Proud to be recognized by my own name. But when I turned around, I saw two familiar figures standing outside the training grounds. Anna and Lucy. The mother and daughter I hadn't seen in four months. Chapter 10. Under the scorching sun, Lucy's eyes sparkled. Dad, you look kind of cool riding the horse and shooting arrows just now. It was the first time in all these years that she had ever complimented me. I had tried so hard to be a part of her life, but I could never fully get in. I remember once when her kindergarten assigned a wood carving project. I'm not very skilled with crafts, but I stayed up all night and made a wooden tiger sculpture for her. When she was four, she took one look at it and pouted. It's not as good as the one grandma's craft teacher made for me. Dad, it seems like you can't do anything right. That tiger sculpture's fate was to end up in the trash. Anna's mother stood on the staircase, not stopping her, with a distant smile on her face. Don't blame Lucy. If she took what you made to school, she'd be laughed at. How could something a father made with love for his child be laughed at, even if it wasn't perfect? It was made with love, but maybe the Lin family isn't a place that understands love. Anna's beloved Paul couldn't even win over the Lin family, could he? If it weren't for the fear that Anna might remain single for life after Paul's death, Anna's mother probably wouldn't have agreed to her marrying someone like me. My thoughts returned to the present, and I gave Lucy a small smile. I know I'm cool. So what? Despite Lucy inheriting the Lin family's full measure of indifference, she was still just a six-year-old child, unable to hide her feelings. Grandma was wrong. It turns out your job isn't just about looking good and to pose flirtatiously. Anna's eyes darkened. Lucy. I laughed. If your grandma says things like that, she's either mean or just senile. Lucy hesitated for a moment, then whispered, Dad, my birthday is next month. Will you come home? I won't. Actors like me don't deserve to attend your birthday, sweetie. Lucy's eyes instantly turned red, and she was about to say something, but Anna cut her off. Go wait in the car. I need to talk to your father. Lucy had a deep respect for Anna and never dared to disobey her. She reluctantly walked toward the car, frequently looking back at me. I glanced up to see Anna staring at me with intense eyes. A slight smile played on her lips. Cameron, why is it that after the divorce, you seem like a different person? You're more articulate and much more cheerful than before. I raised an eyebrow slightly. Do you think I care about your opinion? If you have something to say, get to the point. I'm busy and don't have time to listen to you go on and on. Those were the same words she had once said to me not going to talk. Ah, huh. 
I turned to leave, but she grabbed my arm tightly. Cameron, happy birthday, divorced. And now she remembers my birthday. I pried her fingers off my arm one by one. Seven years later, a belated birthday wish, who would be happy about that? I didn't wait for her to respond and walked straight back to the training area, leaving Anna alone. Uncharacteristically forlorn, standing there. Chapter 11. Soon, I was fully immersed in the intense filming schedule with the crew. Sometimes, a single scene would require dozens of takes due to factors like acting, the other actors, or the lines. But no matter how exhausting the work was, it wasn't as tiring as constantly seeing Anna. Every time, her car would be parked at a discreet distance along the road I took back to my dorm. Her hands were never empty. Sometimes she brought soup she had made herself. Other times, it was a box of pastries from a Michelin-starred chef. These were things she had never done before, things I never thought she would do. She had always been proud, aloof, and never deigned to display our relationship in public. But now, it seemed she didn't care about hiding our connection at all. At first, the other actors in the crew looked at me with envy. Cameron, is your ex-wife really Chairman Lin? She's even more beautiful up close. Is she here to get back together with you? Are you guys going to reconcile? She's amazing. I calmly told them. She has a dead lover in her heart. I was a stand-in for seven years. We were married for seven years. And she never fell for me. There's no reason she'd suddenly like me after the divorce. Right. Do you think I should go back into that trap? To become a kept man of the Lin family. With no freedom. Receiving no emotional support. Only serving as a financial lifeline for my parents' business. They all shook their heads. Saying no way. After that. They no longer looked at Anna with admiration. Sometimes they would whisper to me, Hey, that woman's here again. Anna, looking a bit weary, would step out of her car in high heels. I've had trouble sleeping on this business trip abroad. Cameron, where did you get that body wash you used to use? It seems like that orange scent could help me sleep. I smiled slightly. I made it myself. You can't buy it anywhere. She hesitated for a moment. Then could you? No, I wouldn't. And I didn't want to do anything for her anymore. She didn't get upset and instead pulled a ring from her pocket, handing it to me. You once said you wanted us to wear wedding rings together. As she spoke, the ring slipped from our fingers, falling to the ground and gathering dust, because I hadn't even tried to catch it. She frowned slightly at me. You don't like it. I like it. Just not when it's from you. A trace of confusion crossed her eyes. I spoke clearly, word by word. Anna, a proper ex should be like they're dead. I remembered something she had once said to me. Cameron. I really don't like it when people say my husband is a third-rate actor. Do you understand? And so, we kept our marriage a secret for seven years. History doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. Anna. I really don't like it when people keep bringing up my ex-wife. Anna. Don't come back again. Do you understand? Chapter 12. Once again, Cameron turned his back on Anna and walked away. For the first time, Anna felt a slight sting near her heart, especially when the ring hit the ground. She picked it up, glanced at it, and then with a flick of her wrist, threw it into the nearby artificial lake. A few ripples spread out before the water returned to calm. Cameron would never know that this pair of rings was something she had personally helped design. Inside the ring, the letters Sia were engraved, representing the first letters of their names. She only wanted to make up for the regrets of the past. She felt like she was losing her mind. Ever since the divorce, when her insomnia became untreatable, it was as if something within her blood had awakened. It seemed to be screaming that she needed to reassess her relationship with Cameron. That night, unable to sleep again, she decided to drink until she was tipsy and called an old friend to join her. Her friend, swirling a glass of red wine, looked at her in confusion. Are you telling me that only after the divorce, you realized you loved your husband? Anna paused for a moment, then let out a bitter laugh. Maybe I'm just not used to it. Her friend chuckled, and compared to the one from before, who are you more used to? She knew her friend was referring to Paul the younger student she had dated in college. Paul was the heartthrob of the university, handsome and bold, and when he liked someone, he pursued them passionately. He wooed Anna with every romantic gesture imaginable, and soon the whole campus knew about them. At that time, Anna was young and naive, naturally drawn to such a boy. The day they confirmed their relationship, Paul gave her a photo and playfully forced her to write, my dearest Paul, on it. Anna, I want to be your favorite person. Anna had kept that photo all these years, almost without thinking about it. Later, Anna's father forced them apart, upholding their family's belief that it's fine to have fun, but marriage is serious. Her father's strategy was psychological warfare, using the coldest words to break down her defenses. That boy, your aunt has slept with him. That day, she broke up with Paul in her sports car. Paul's eyes were red with anger. I didn't. I was tricked by the event organizers. Nothing happened. I ran away. You have to believe me. Anna scoffed. Do you really think my father would lie to me? In a fit of rage. Paul tried to jump out of the car, 
In the struggle, a truck came speeding toward them. Everything plunged into darkness, ending in tragedy. Anna's father had indeed lied. It was all because their family needed to marry into an equally prestigious one, and Paul, an orphan, was unworthy. Anna didn't attend her father's funeral afterward. Paul remained a deep-seated guilt in her heart, unrelated to love, just guilt. If she had believed him, if she hadn't passed out that day and could have pulled him out of the car in time, maybe he wouldn't have died. A few glasses of wine later, the story was finished. Her friend patted Anna on the shoulder. What you feel is just guilt. Guilt is not love. Think about it. If it had been Cameron in the car that day, what would you have done? Anna didn't speak for a long time. She took a large gulp of wine, bit her lip, and finally, with a hint of drunken self-mockery, said, then I guess I would have died with him. Chapter 13. The crew rarely had a day off. The third female lead in the group shyly asked me to go to a movie. I politely declined. I'm only focused on my career right now. I have no plans for a relationship. She smiled but still handed me the movie ticket. You can watch it or not. But if you ever plan to start a relationship, please let me take a spot in line. I laughed, amused by her honesty and naivety. When I looked up, I found myself locking eyes with Anna's cold gaze. Lucy was standing beside her. I sighed. Why is this happening again? Half an hour later, we were sitting in a cafe. Lucy raised her little chin arrogantly. Dad, I don't like you being involved with that woman we just saw. I chuckled. TSK TSK. You're still so young, but your heart is already as big as a boss lady's. Sweetheart, you live in a villa. You can control the servants, but you can't control others. Lucy clenched her little fists. Dad, you've changed. I don't like the way you are now. You're so cold to me and mom. I took a sip of coffee. Am I? But I quite like the way I am now. In her anger, she accidentally knocked over the juice, spilling it onto her white dress. Anna frowned slightly. Go take care of it in the restroom. Once Lucy was gone, I dropped my thin pretense and frowned at Anna. Didn't I tell you not to come looking for me? She ignored my question. Is that person pursuing you? I laughed in frustration. Anna, we're already divorced. Who I'm with and what I do is my business. Cameron, can we go back to the way things were? Lucy wants you to come home. She's only seven. She can't be without her father. Your heart should soften for her sake. I can change the things you didn't like about me before. I could sense that this was Anna's most sincere attempt to win me back. For someone like Anna, who has been a goddess her whole life, she's probably never begged anyone before. Anna, we're done. There's no going back. That little bit of unresolved feeling you have really has nothing to do with me. Chapter 14 Anna felt like she was losing her mind more and more. After being turned away so many times, she still didn't want to give up. Cameron was gentle and kind and she thought that with enough persistence, he would eventually relent. In the past, her guilt over Paul prevented her from opening her heart to love another man, but ten years had passed, and it was time for her to move on. The day she burned Paul's photo, Jake unexpectedly showed up. Chairman Lin, for the sake of my cousin, could you help me one last time? Jake was Paul's cousin. The last incident in the live stream was also done in Paul's name. Anna stared at Jake for a long time. What is it? Chairman Lin, the movie I'm starring in is set to release next month. But if another film releases at the same time, it'll steal my spotlight. Can you help delay its release? Could you push the release of The General back a few months? Jake knew very well that Anna had the power to make this happen. This is the power of capital. But Anna didn't know that she would deeply regret this decision later. She called her assistant and instructed them to handle this shady task. The assistant hesitated. Chairman Lin, the lead actor in The General, is Cameron. Are you sure you want to do this? Anna was stunned for a moment. It was just a few months' delay not a cancellation. At worst, she could compensate by paying the theater chains to give more screen time to his movie. Go ahead. Do as Jake asked. Chapter 15. After the movie wrapped up, a rough cut was edited. The entire crew watched it, and everyone was thrilled. The director even slapped his thigh, exclaiming, this is a hit. Everyone's performance is top-notch. It's bound to explode when it premieres, especially Mr. Lee, a 93-year-old veteran artist who played my grandfather, was the most excited. He had spent his entire life acting in TV dramas, and this was his first movie. It would also be his last. If I could see it premiere before I die, I could rest in peace. I smiled and reassured him. Soon, just two more months, and it will be released. But life is unpredictable. The movie was suddenly ordered to undergo revisions, and the release date was indefinitely postponed. Our joy was abruptly overshadowed by dark clouds. Given Mr. Lee's age, sudden illness was a common occurrence. He lay in his hospital bed tears welling up in his eyes, if only I could see the movie premiere before I die, but at that moment, the comforting words I wanted to say got stuck in my throat, and I couldn't bring myself to say them, the day he passed away, the movie still hadn't been released, I sat on a bench outside the funeral home for a long time, staring at the dark clouds, 
I suddenly thought of Martin. When my best friend Martin was nearing the end of his illness, his hair had all fallen out. His family and I were still trying to hide the severity of his condition from him. He raised his thin, bony arm and joked. Movie stars are supposed to be handsome. I look this ugly. Does that mean I can't be one? I wanted to smoke but held back. You'll get better. One day, you'll win an award and become a movie star. And I'll be in the audience applauding for you. But Martin insisted on having a cigarette. When I'm gone, please don't go wandering on the rooftop anymore. Okay. As long as you're alive, there's always hope. You can't give up on the world just because of your dysfunctional family. Cameron, if you jump, you'll truly have nothing left. He knew everything. Understood everything. Cameron, I'm dying soon. If you like acting too, could you help me fulfill this dream? Cameron, a man's word is his bond. Don't go back on it. Okay. Martin, that clever little guy. He was just afraid I would try to commit suicide again because of my upbringing. He must have thought that once he was gone, there would be no one left to pull me back from the rooftop. He wanted me to live. So I lived. From that moment on, his dream became my dream. But wasn't his regret the same as Mr. Lee's regret? As a child. I was powerless to do anything about Martin's death. Now, I was powerless again to fulfill Mr. Lee's last wish, and a deep sense of helplessness overwhelmed me. But just then, the director told me a truth. This movie, it was suppressed by Anna's people. Anger flared in my eyes. If she hadn't interfered, Mr. Lee's wish could have come true, and I'm certain, I could have won an award. I was confident I could have fulfilled Martin's dream this time. Chapter 16 This was the first time I sought out Anna since our divorce. The surprise and slight delight in her eyes were evident. The first thing I did was slap her hard across the face. Anna covered her cheek, glaring at me. Cameron, are you crazy? You can't just act recklessly because you know I like you. I laughed bitterly in my rage. Anna, is this how you show your love? Suppressing the movie I worked so hard to film just for Jake? Destroying someone else's dream for your selfish desires? Cameron, he's Paul's cousin. I just wanted to ease my guilt. How laughable. I had pieced together the story between her and Paul from various people before our divorce, though I never met him. I couldn't help but sigh at the loss of a young life due to a relationship. Anna, if you were truly so devoted, you should have died with Paul when he passed away. Why drag someone else's life into your guilt? Anna's fingers trembled slightly, and for the first time, her face showed an unprecedented dishevelment. Her voice was hoarse. Cameron, I just want to start over with you. Maybe you won't believe it, but I've suddenly realized that I actually love you. I stood at the door, backlit by the light, and sneered, but Anna, I've already started to hate you. Chapter 17 From the moment Cameron said he hated her, Anna knew there was no going back. She didn't even have the courage to appear before Cameron again. All she could do was, like a shadowy figure, secretly gather updates about him online. Her insomnia worsened, and the doctor said it was caused by a troubled heart. A troubled heart needs a remedy of the heart, but she had none left. Five months later, the movie in which Cameron played the lead role finally premiered. With its high-quality production and superb acting, The General became both a critical and commercial success. The day Cameron stood on the stage to accept the Red Peony Award for Best Actor, she and Lucy were seated in the audience. Mom, Dad looks so handsome, like he's surrounded by a glow. Dad is amazing. He fulfilled his dream. Anna nodded. Your dad is excellent. He's always been a resilient person. She sighed softly. It's your mom who lost him. That year, on the streets of Harbor City, after taking a phone call, Cameron had disappeared, but when she turned around, Cameron had embraced her, holding two ice creams in one hand. Do you want some? It's sweet. I won't disappear. I'll hold you tight. Now, as she turned around, Cameron stood in the midst of dazzling light, but between them lay an insurmountable chasm. After the awards ceremony, she had the butler take Lucy home first. She drove alone along the ring road, trying to dispel the persistent unease in her heart. The car radio happened to be playing gossip about Cameron the newly crowned best actor, Cameron, we've heard that you might be starting a new relationship, is that true? Cameron's voice was clear and confident, life has to go on, if you meet the right person, why not give it a try? As the host congratulated him, Anna's speed quickly accelerated, unknown dangers loomed like a beast approaching, a section of the overpass collapsed in the middle, if Anna had driven slower and braked in time, she might have had a slim chance of survival, but she did nothing, in that moment, she suddenly gave up on all actions. Cameron was right. When Paul died, she should have died with him. She had never cherished what she had. She used Cameron to atone for her guilt over Paul's death. But now that she had lost Cameron, what could she use to replace that regret? As the car tumbled down the hill, she wanted to ask him, Cameron, if I die, will you remember me the way you remember Martin? But she knew the answer, he wouldn't, because she didn't deserve it. Chapter 18 When the host announced Cameron's name, 
I almost experienced a momentary ringing in my ears. The director and my fellow cast members smiled and urged me to go up on stage. It wasn't until I held the crystal clear trophy in my hand that I truly felt it, I did it. Through all the ups and downs, my hard work had finally paid off. Martin, I've won the best actor award. Did you see that? I didn't lie to you. I fulfilled our dream. At that moment, I imagined Martin sitting in the audience, clapping for me with that big, goofy smile on his face. My eyes instantly welled up with tears. In my youth, I was obsessed with wanting my parents' love to be fair, wanting them to love me as much as they loved my brother, leading to endless depression and frustration. After getting married, I longed for an equal share of love from my wife and child, but it was a love I could never obtain. But now, I understand. Self-love allows you to move forward without fear because the deepest source of confidence comes from a fulfilled heart. Chapter 19 After the awards ceremony, I received a call from an unknown number. It was my mother. Her voice sounded old and weary. Cameron, I'm sick. I've been sick for a long time and didn't want to bother you. If you have time, could you come and see me? No. Let my brother visit you instead. He's been enjoying the benefits of being your most favored child since he was young. Now it's time for him to take on some responsibilities. With that, I hung up the phone and promptly added the number to my blacklist. Making a clean break from a toxic, loveless family was something I felt was necessary. Chapter 20 I thought I'd be able to sleep peacefully after winning the big award. But early the next morning, a phone call woke me up. My assistant told me, Anna drove off a cliff last night. She's confirmed dead. The Lin family is looking for you. I guess they want to invite you to the funeral. The news caught me off guard, and I was stunned for a few seconds. Decline the invitation. There's no rule that says an ex-husband has to attend his ex-wife's funeral. I didn't really want to see her while she was alive. Now that she's dead, there's even less reason to. She was just a chapter in my life, one that will fade into dust and gradually disappear. I pulled back the curtains, and the sun was shining brightly outside. It was another beautiful day.